just don't get it. How can everyone hate Star Fox games and love them at the same time? It just doesn't make any sense. Oh, Fox. You had so much potential. You could have been the next new IP. If only people liked your games. Wait a second. People did like his games. The first ones. I gotta go back and play them. No time to lose. I gotta see why people liked Star Fox. People just liked the flying and shooting. They didn't like all the extra stuff that was added. What? You can hear my thoughts? Yep. So earlier. Yes. I heard you checking out my girlfriend earlier. I'm gonna leave you a $10 tip. Yes. Greetings and salutations and welcome to The Toka Show, where right here, right now, I am announcing that I will be reviewing every single game on the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. Celebrate. Isn't that exciting? And what better game to start off with than Star Fox 2? Star Fox 2 is a game that has been completed for over 20 years, but was never officially sold. After the first, Star Fox was released to critical success for its use of the FX chip, making the game 3D on a 16-bit system, the sequel was started almost immediately, and like I said, it was nearly completed, but because of the N64 with its 3D polygonal graphics was just released, Nintendo didn't want to draw any attention away from their new console with a big release on the Super Nintendo. Also, the new console's graphics would have made Star Fox 2 look worse by comparison, so the game was cancelled, and has remained a mystery until now. When it was finally officially released for the first time with 20 other classic games on the SNES Classic system. For those of you who don't know, the SNES Classic is a small little plug and play console from Nintendo with 21 of the best Super Nintendo games pre-installed. They already released an NES version of this last year, and there's already rumors of a N64 version coming out in a couple years after this. But right now, all we have is this. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, look at all these classic titles. Donkey Kong Country, Mega Man X, Super Mario World, Final Fantasy 3 slash 6, Super Mario RPG, and I'm gonna review all of them. But we're gonna start with Star Fox 2, because I already gave you guys the history of it, and it just wouldn't make any sense to play another game now. Unfortunately, I can't play Star Fox 2 until I beat the first level of the original Star Fox. So let's do it. It shouldn't be too hard. Star Fox crash into the ground. Do a barrel roll and save Slippy because that's what you do in Star Fox. Also, you die a lot because it's kind of hard. Okay, first things first. Yes, this game looks very old. But you know what? This was very impressive at the time, and I think it still is. So shut up, Minecraft, with your ultra super good looks pack or whatever. I'm into older, more mature women, but that that's besides the point. This was impressive because this came out on a system where almost every other game looked like this. 2D and flat. Yes, the Super Nintendo did have Mode 7, which was a process used to make things like this possible. Whoa. Cool. Groovy. But this was something completely different. This was a fully 3D game, and okay, yes, I'll admit it, it does look a little dated. It is very hard to tell the difference between the enemies and the background a lot of the times. But enough with the graphics. It's what's on the inside that counts. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Yuri and Harley Quinn. Anyways, we've got our flight team. Obviously, Fox, who is the leader and also, you know, player. Peppy, who says, Do a barrel roll! But not in this one. <laughs> not in this one. Slippy, who is significantly less annoying in this game than the others. And finally, Falco, who is a jerk! He asks you to help him out, and when you do, he tells you to mind your own business. 
How is that fair? Oh, and also there's a dog who is a Beatles reference or something. I don't care. Let's play Star Fox. So the objective of the original Star Fox is to just fly through four levels, shooting aliens to get Andros, who was supposed to be a huge flying monkey head, but looks more like an Easter Island head. It's a pretty simple game, albeit a little hard because it takes time to get used to the controls, but mostly it's just flying through four levels. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but there are actually three different paths you can take. So you can play through the game at least three times and get a different experience. All in all, it's a decent game. I wouldn't say it holds up in today's standards. That was Star Fox the original. Now it's time to see Star Fox 2, the real deal. And here it is, Star Fox 2. The first thing I noticed is the character selection. This time around, you can choose to play as any of the characters, including these two new adorable characters. You can also choose a wingman, I'm guessing for when you hit the space bars later in the game. So the game kind of plays like a real-time strategy of sorts. The goal is to save this planet from these guys. The bad guys. If the damage percentage reaches a 100%, it's game over. So it's your job to travel to all the enemy planets and space stations and take them out. The twist is that while you are traveling to these places on the map, the enemy's missiles and warships are also moving. So you can encounter them on your way to the actual missions. It's really cool. You'll be heading to an enemy planet, but then realize there is a warship about to launch a laser at your planet. So you have to take care of that before it does any damage to your planet. You can even encounter members of Star Wolf on your journey. The Star Wolf team is super cool. Why? Because Wolf has an eye patch. And when have eye patches ever not been cool? The answer is never. Eye patches are always cool. In fact, I can only think of one thing cooler Space Dragon. That's also in this game, just FYI. One thing that was weird to me is that all the missions that take place in space and not in the planet, like the Star Wolf battles, missile attacks, and spaceship encounters, take place in this weird first person view. It's kind of nice because you have a target in this mode, which kind of makes aiming easier, but I wish I could see my whole ship like I do when I'm on a planet. Not a huge deal, but something I thought was worth mentioning. Speaking of the planet battles, when you are on a planet, the main objective is to always infiltrate a station and blow it up from the inside. You think that would be hard? flying a spaceship into a building but don't worry because boom ATAT -AT mode this is the coolest thing to me to be able to move around jumping and shooting in a 3d environment on the Super Nintendo I'll take two good sir and it actually works super well walking around with the d-pad and turning with the R and L buttons it feels pretty good and before you can say do a barrel roll I've cleared the system time to take the fight straight to Andros or I mean death stroke whatever he's easy the universe is now saved that was really fun, like surprisingly fun. I am really impressed at how Star Fox 2 handles, especially in today's standards of video games. I am definitely going to give it a couple more playthroughs and see what different things will happen. I think the Super Nintendo Classic was worth it for Star Fox 2 alone. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and as always, please consider subscribing to my channel, The Toka Show, and giving that bell a ding a ling ling so you are notified for whenever my new videos come out, which, by the way, is every Tuesday and Saturday. Also, follow my Twitter. We have fun over there, right, guys? Right? No? Nah, that's fine. I have fun. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs>